circle and what to do when you're stopped by the police. Now we have to tell ourselves, our daughters, our mothers, our sisters, our cousins. As I watched the video, I thought, this is not murder. This is an assassination. Judge for yourself. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to our, our very esteemed attorney, Benjamin Crump. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Teresa Ailey, for helping this family and helping the community in these very difficult times. Uh, I'm attorney Ben Crump, along with attorney Natalie Jackson, attorney Paul Grinke, and attorney Jennifer Hightower. We have the honor of representing the family of Sonia Massey. Present with us today is her son, Malachi Massey, her uncle, Raymond Massey, as well as his daughter, Shadia Massey. Also with me, uh, and Ms. Haley is Cliff Jones, who's going to assist me today as we talk about the results of the autopsy. Um, before we do that, I want to also talk about uh, an update as we continue to probe and find out all the reasons why this tragedy happened leading up before the killing, the killing and the aftermath of the killing. We talked about how the family wanted a thorough investigation as to why they didn't know until 24 hours later that the person who had shot Sonia Massey was a law enforcement official. Why weren't they told that from the very beginning when they showed up asking who did this? Malachi talked about how he was on the phone with the uh, hospital officials and he kept asking, and they kept saying somebody shot her in her face and told him in graphic detail at five o'clock in the morning what happened to his mother, but never told him who. Uh, Shadia and Jimmy went to the house at 6 a.m. that morning when law enforcement was all around. They kept asking the questions, who did this? What happened? Nobody told them that it was the sheriff's deputy, Sean Grayson, who had shot her in the face. They seemed to be, be led to believe that it was some prowler or something because they started asking questions every time they would ask questions. They would be given questions. What was the history between her and the neighbor? And so it was troubling. So we wanted uh, investigation. And I say we, the family, passionately wanted an investigation into that there because they are suspicious of everybody and everything. Wouldn't you be if this happened to your daughter, your mother? <coughs> And then we talked with the Department of Justice um, because we want to know more about the history of this sheriff's deputy who so flagrantly <coughs> and senselessly shot and killed Sonia Massey with no remorse, no humanity after he did it evidenced by the video. People contacted our office since we've had the press conferences, Teresa, and, and this is why we continue to try to fight not only in the court of law, but in the court of public opinion, because we know we have to fight to get justice. We don't assume that it's just going to happen for black people in America, even when we got all the evidence in the world, all the visual evidence in the world, we still don't take it for granted. We know the lessons of Laquan McDonald and how the officer got a slap on the wrist, even though that evidence was on video, ocular proof of the crime. And we have been made aware that there were some unsubstantiated allegations of excessive force by this officer allegedly, on two occasions, uh, one dealing with an African-American, 
who uh, received injuries from uh, allegedly a tasing. But regrettably, before the findings were concluded, the individual wouldn't cooperate because apparently he was dealing with the criminal charges. And so he apparently didn't trust the system to do right by him. So we know that that individual is now considering coming forward. Um, even though you have to understand, a lot of people, uh, a lot of minorities in America don't come forward for many reasons. They don't call the police for many reasons because things normally don't turn out good for us when we call the police. <clears throat> Obviously, Sonia Massey is exhibit one, but we're hoping and encouraging him to come forward uh, and tell what happened with his interaction with um, Deputy Sean Grayson. And then the other individual we know is out there. We don't know what this um, situation is, but apparently they uh, also complained about excessive, unnecessary force inflicted by the deputy. And the question really goes back to what Sonia's father, Mr. Weirburn, said. With the two DUIs, with the reprimand from the Army over serious misconduct, with the six different law enforcement agencies in four years, with whatever answers he answered in the questionnaires when he was interviewing for the job. When you asked about why did you leave this department, why did you resign from this, were there red flags missed? And should he have been hired in the first place by the sheriff's department? Those questions only get louder. You know, Malachi and Cliff Jones and us, we asked that question, you know, do you get guilty convictions? How do you even have a driver's license? Much less getting a job as a sheriff's deputy. Many questions to be answered. And so we will be sending the formal letter to the Department of Justice with those things that we have been made aware of and they have promised the family that they will work with the local agencies and they will try to get answers to all of these allegations of other instances of excessive force. And before you hear from Uncle Raymond Massey and Shadia Massey, and finally, from Malachi Massey, we want to uh, take a few minutes to go over the autopsy report because I think it's important. And, Teresa, I'll tell you when to turn it over. Um, and you all... I want to thank State Attorney John Muir Heiser um, for making sure he got the autopsy um, to the family for transparency and that he's providing it to you all. Um, even though the family takes great exception with the Sheriff's Department, they have been very uh, grateful that Mr. Muir Heiser's office has tried to be very transparent and very respectful to them as victims. Um, and so he made sure that this autopsy report was released and it should give you a lot of the things, answer a lot of the questions that you all asked previously. Um, the biggest thing on the autopsy are the findings. 
and we will uh, go through those. The conclusion is based on the information available to me and on the autopsy findings, it is my opinion that Sonia Massey, a 36-year-old black woman, died as a result of a gunshot wound to the head. And then it goes on to in more detail. And it says, the gunshot wound of the head, A, the entrance was beneath the left eye. The injury, proliferation of the left internal carot, um, subra, I'm, I'm looking at this word because I know So it's not subdural artery, but it's um, an artery that is the blood vessel right beneath her eye. Um, the exit posterior left surface of the upper neck. Associated injuries, skull fracture, subdural hemorrhaging. Direction, front to back, downward and slightly right to left. Range, no soot or gunpowder stippling on the skin. If you could turn it over. And I would tell you, they, they have an anatomical model that is very important. Here, obviously. You have uh, Sonia Massey with her beautiful smile. But you have, as they said, the entry right beneath the left eye. And then they talk about how the exit is posterior left surface of the upper neck below the ear, below her hairline. Now, why this is so significant, why this is so significant is it confirms that Deputy Sean Grayson shot in a downward trajectory he shot on a downward trajectory. This autopsy findings coupled with the video where we see her ducking, saying sorry, sir, sorry. He shot when she's making a motion coming up. That's how you get the downward trajectory. And you see on the video his arms. He aims down. He literally aims down. You see his arms brace in a downward trajectory. And we know that he walked two to three steps to his right out away from the counter where it was, we believe, from objective observation to get a better shot at Sawyer Massey. And when Sawyer Massey was staring at the barrel of his gun, we see on the video what she did. She stooped down and said, sorry, sorry. And we believe that the bullet, the shot, was shot while she was in a stupid position coming up. And that's how you get the downward trajectory. And the autopsy confirms what everybody already knew on the video, that this was just a senseless, unnecessary, excessive use of force. Completely unnecessary. Certainly not justified. 
I mean, how can you justify this? She's all of five foot one, 110 pounds. He's approximately six foot five inches tall, approximately 260 pounds. Completely excessive. Completely excessive. And so we will continue to provide you updates, evidence, as we get it, because we're not taking for granted that America won't see Sonia Massey like Deputy Sean Grayson saw her. We want to make sure that America sees her as a human being worthy of dignity and respect and consideration. We don't take it for granted. Your actions speak so loud we need not hear your words. And until we get a conviction and a sentence, we will continue to keep our foot on the gas and force steam ahead and fight for justice for Sonia Massey. Full steam ahead. We understand far too often, especially as it relates to black women in America, there's not equal justice. There's not equal justice. And just like Sonia Massey said, and I continue to use her words, until this discriminatory criminal justice system gives full justice for the death of Sonia Massey, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. Yes. At this time, you will hear from um, Uncle Raymond Massey, Mr. Wilburn, her father and Ms. Donna, her mother couldn't be with us today. And, and I, I really appreciate Malachi being here. This is very emotional, even seeing these pictures, even though he hasn't been able to watch the video, uh, because that's his mama. You can't, who wants to see their mother get killed like an animal? Uh, but even this was emotional for him, but he understood why we have to do it so we can get justice for his mother. So we're gonna hear from uh, Raymond Massey and he's gonna talk to you about the families continuing to struggle in these difficult times as they fight for justice. And then you, we're gonna have his daughter talk to you. Mr. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to tell you that I loved Sonia very much. She was a beautiful black queen. Um, she is the only family member that me and my wife was talking last night about. I've never once seen her angry or mad. She was always full of love, and she loved her kids and God. Um, I call my sister Donna, Malachi, Summer, and their parents daily. And um, it hurts me so bad that the last time I spoke with Malachi, he had told me he finally got a little rest, and that was just the day before yesterday. Um, and I can tell you that um, their, his sister is having nightmares to the point where she's, we have to check the room. That just makes me so angry to see my family hurt as they do. I also... It was so hard, it's hard for me to see my daughter and my nephew had to go in the house and clean up blood. And that, that just hurts me to see my family hurt. And after what Attorney Crump had talked about the autopsy, that is exactly why he needs to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madison.
Thank you very much, Mr. Massey. Now you will hear from Shadia Massey, who is her first cousin, uh, Raymond's uh, daughter. And even though she has uh, three other sisters, she was raised with Shadia, and they were like sisters. And Shadia was the first family member to arrive at the scene. And uh, I mean, she, obviously the emotion of seeing your sister blood everywhere and how she tried to clean the blood up. Um, so Malachi and Summer, her children, wouldn't have to see their mother's blood when they came in the house to get their clothes. Um, so Shadir Massey will try to speak to you uh, from the heart. Hello. Sonia meant the world to me. I loved her so much. This tragedy has been too much on my family. Her kids, her daughter cannot sleep at night, y'all. She's in one household, I'm in another household. For her to go to the bathroom, she has to be on FaceTime with me. For her to get a drink of water, she has to call us before she get out of her bed. Mm. You know, this is the hardest thing that we have ever been through as a Massey. It just breaks my heart that our family has to go through this. No, no, you, right. Justice for Sonny Madison. Yes, 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 yes. So finally, you hear from Malachi, who was the first one notified that his mother had been killed. And just as he explained to us what they told him, you see, was defined as an autopsy. So, Malachi, if you would share what you on your heart. You know that they told me that my mom, you know, she got shot in her eye and it came out of her neck or whatever. And I don't know, like, I haven't been able to sleep for real. The only time I really feel comfortable sleeping is when, like, when I'm, like, just on the floor. I can't even sleep in my bed. Like, I don't know. Like, this is just, um. I don't, I really don't have words. Like I've been said, I don't have words for real for this. But the first night I don't go to my mother's house, this happens. How? Why? And I wonder if I was there, if he would have did anything to me. I don't know. It's real. That's all I can say. Did you and your sister stay with Uncle she lives with her father. I live with my father. And, and I, I will say this, up until just a few weeks, Malachi and Summer were staying mm -hmm. with their mother. Um, she was having mental illnesses, and they made the decision it was best that they stay with their father while she seeks help. And uh, But both of them were going every day to check on their mother, be with their mother, and... The first time I talked to Malachi, he was so distraught because he said, because I was working, this was the first day I didn't get to her, and this happens. Um, and then the only other thing, Malachi, you may want to tell him is, you think law enforcement oh, yeah. came there earlier that day. Okay, it was, it, it was an incident that happened earlier that day, and I talked to two officers or whatever, and I believe that it's the same officer that shot my mother. I talked to his partner first. Then the second officer, I, that's the one that, I think, the one that did that. I talked to them. And they told me that, because she was driving herself to the hospital or something. She wasn't even at the house when this was going on. But she was driving herself to the hospital. They told me that they were going to go there to help her. And then this happens. So she was seeking help because she was trying to get help. And it's like Mr. Wilburn said, she was trying to get help. She needed a helping hand, not a bullet to the face. That's right. 
She just needed those officers to extend an ounce of humanity, not to kill her. And like we said, mental illness is real. You all may have family members who are struggling with their mental health. They, they deserve compassion and consideration, not excessive, unjustified force like we saw in that video. So we continue to try to say that Sonia Massey, life matters. She did, man, when you hear Malachi talk about what kind of mother she was, how she worked overtime to help him get a car and everything so he can get a, a job, how she talked to him about balance and budgets and about the Bible and about trying to uh, work and be responsible. I mean, she was doing her best to be a person who helped people in the world, especially her children. She did not deserve this. She did not deserve this. Um, so, Melanie, if you, you got anything else you want to say? Okay. Um, thank you so much, Malachi. Um, we will try to take some of your questions if you have any. So, I'm sorry, the, the Malachi was describing earlier on July 5th that there was a response uh, that, that the same officers... That he said he believes it was the same officers. That's why he believes they knew she had mental, was uh, struggling with her mental health. And she had driven herself to the hospital to, for treatment? Uh, she had sought consultation, yes. She, she had not been in an inpatient program, but she was under a doctor's care? Yeah, well... Mr. Wilborn said it, remember at the other press house, she was trying to uh, get consultation because she was struggling with her mental health. So, yes, so sir. Malachi believes that the officers went to his mom's house earlier that day. I mean, the day before, July 5th. When, right? July 5th. Yes, J J July 5th. July 5th. And do, do we know why they went to the house? Uh, no. Uh, some incident happened. She was on her way to the hospital when she was talking to Malachi. But if you talk to the officers, too. Yeah. I talked to them, and I was letting them know what was going on. I, I really don't know what happened before I got there, but I just know that I talked to them and let them know what's wrong with my mother. So you talked to one of the officers by phone? I'm just no, in person, face to face. House. Yes, they was at my house. You were at the house at yeah. the same time visiting? And she drove herself to the hospital because she, I, I don't know why she did, but she drove herself to the hospital. When I got there, it was just the police there. Because my mother called me before all of this happened, and she told me the police was there. And when I got to her house, she wasn't there. She was calling me, telling me that she's driving herself to the hospital, and they were outside of the house. So you don't know who called 911 or called her? So she drove herself to the hospital after the encounter with the police, mm -hmm. right, that day? You told them about her struggle with mental health. Yeah, and I just tried that, like, the whole week, like, before all of this happened, I've been trying to get her in a mental health. We actually did get her in a mental health place in St. Louis, but they let her come back. I don't know why, though. Why would they let her come back to the school? I don't know. Okay, thank you, Melvin. Um, for you, thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes, sir. You had a reference to separate. Uh, people that had uh, use of force complaints uh, that were never officially filed, were those? I, I think they were filed. They had no determination, is okay. what we've been told. But they were filed. And, and, and just to get, I guess, to my question, were both of those for same and county specifically, or were those a previous law enforcement job? I, I, we think it was a previous uh, law enforcement job. Um, one of them was an African-American uh, citizen. We don't know the other one, but we know that the allegations is that they reported them. They have contacted our office. One of them did tell us he was a black man and told us uh, it's the same guy and that he, um, what you call it, they end up charging him and stuff, and he thinks they did that intentionally. 
Uh, and so apparently it's in his record that there were allegations made uh, but unsubstantiated. So we continue to try to get to the crux of that. Um, the other individual called the office said that, you know, they made an uh, allegation, but nothing happened. And they didn't want to go further. They just prayed for the family and said, you know, we had a run in with him too. So these were proactive calls from the people to you, not officials? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah proactive calls. Yeah. What has the DOJ told you? You told us the other day that they don't do investigation. They say we're monitoring, assessing, and following the criminal case. Right. And the subsequent to that, we have been told to try to send a formal inquiry about these other allegations so they can look at who those citizens were and if there was a common uh, connection of the excessive force and on who did he inflict excessive force allegedly on. Okay, so they... You, I mean, you're familiar with this, this process. Yeah. Uh, they, they haven't said an investigation here, but they are assessing what you're... Right. You're the, so that apparently they've opened a file, and they have come short of calling it an investigation. And they told us they would notify us uh, that they are trying to get information just like we're trying to get information and that they're working with the local officials to get information. Um, there uh, obviously plenty of questions about the incident with police arriving to her home earlier in the day. If, if you know all of that, hey, who was at the house? Got to be aside. If, if there were multiple visits to her home in that day, what does that tell you about the the way that she was received when those deputies showed up at the scene later, and the, the temperament and the, the way she was treated when they when they got. Well, you know, it's going to be interesting, uh, and I'm sure we can find out who went on the call earlier. Was it the same officers or not? And then did they have body camera video on then and so forth? And can we find that out? Um, we're just trying to get to the truth of what happened, man, because what happened on that video was not right. It was senseless, and it was unjustified. And so we want to know everything that led up to her being shot in the face while she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I guess just with, to go off that, the, there were already critiques of the way they were handling, you know, treating her, talking to her uh, at, the, at the home before any of this happened. The way she, she was going through something and they were, they were short, they were talking slowly to her. And I, I guess just if there was a, already that history of knowing she hadn't had that, does that just expound on those problems for you? Exactly. If you knew it was a person dealing with mental issues, then why in the world would you ever feel the need to do that to her? You know, she has no history. She never been arrested. You know, the autopsy, there were no drugs in her system other than the medication that we know about. She was just a mother trying to be a mother to her children. Uh, she did the right thing. She, she had them go live with their fathers and so forth while she was trying to get mental health. She was trying to do everything right. It was, you know, these officers, namely, you know, Grayson, who didn't respect her enough to try to say she's having mental issues and we need to try to be compassionate, not heavy-handed. It was reported with the Kincaid Police Department um, in their records that showed misconduct, serious offense. Do we know with Logan County and St. Louis County, do they also read misconduct, serious offense when going through his application? I, I would assume so if they were being prudent. You know, you don't just hire somebody willy-nilly and you're going to give them a gun and a badge and say you get to go interact with the public. That, that's what Mr. Wilborn keeps saying. 
why did he even have a job as a sheriff's deputy after those red flags? And uh, the question that I also have is, you know, did these police departments or um, sheriff departments, would there be documents that you requested or we've seen where they tracked, yes, we went to sign the mass house at this time, this time, and this time, like before that July 6th encounter early in the morning? You know, we don't know, but we believe that when they go to somebody's house, there has to, there should be some report of it. And so that's why we're hoping, as I told Malachi, we will, will know were these the same officers who came to the house or not when he got there trying to check on his mother. Yes, sir. Can you or a family member talk about what they were trying to do specifically to get Miss Massey mental health aid and the St. Louis situation uh, with her being down there. When is the time frame for that state? Uh, and Mr. Wilburn and Brianna here, I think they were the ones who were trying to help her with that, her sister Brianna. And, and, and you, okay, do you know uh, how long she was supposed to stay in St. Louis? Or? It was supposed to be 30 days, but then she got out after two. 30 days, but they released out the two. That's what she said. Was that it? Sorry, uh, was that a voluntary? Yeah, it was a voluntary. They made the, and, and I, Malachi talked to uh, Mr. Jones and I. The reason his sister and he were not staying at his mother's house anymore was because she was going to be at the, at the mental health facility in uh, St. Louis. And, yes. you know the name of the facility? No, no matter. We'll get it. Yes, sir. Yes. Do you have a reason for why, even though she was supposed to be there for 30 days, they released her after two days? He said he doesn't know. Yes, ma'am. Do you know where she was driving to over the last week? St. John's Hospital. Thank you. Any other questions? It underscores that mental health is real, and we need to understand that people who are trying to get help need us to be considerate of their efforts to try to better themselves. And apparently she was trying, huh? She was trying, y'all. She was trying. And so we will continue to try for Sonia Massey. We will continue to fight for her to get justice. Um, for justice. And we keep saying that word for justice uh, because her son and her daughter and their family deserve full justice. Um, we will keep you updated. We know that on Sunday uh, there's been a national call uh, for mourning for Sonia Massey in over 25 cities, Tamika Mallory and Until Freedom. Uh, a civic engagement organization has uh, set it up and they're having uh, rallies in New York, Washington, D.C., St. Louis, Los Angeles, all around the country uh, for Sonia Massey. We know that uh, Reverend Al Sharpton and uh, clergy are in Chicago on Tuesday at 6 p.m. having a rally for justice for Sonia Massey. And we know that congressional members as well as um, the vice president are constantly um, praying for the family and also uh, seeking to talk with her family in the days to come. Uh, we've talked to about three congressional members so far, and I know Vice President Harris is uh, trying to set up a time to talk with the family of Sean. Uh, Sonia Massey. Mr. Clark, so, what's, what's that agency that's putting these rallies together? Uh, it's a couple of them. It's uh, National Action Network, Until Freedom, National Action Network, the NAACP, 
uh, all the civil rights organizations. Say her name, uh, based out of Los Angeles, uh, of black women who have been killed by police violence, like Sandra Bland, like Atiana Jefferson, like Pamela Turner, like Breonna Taylor, and you know, the list goes on and on. Yes, they are. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you.